Episode 4, The Declaration of Cuauhtémoc. The years following the Mexican Revolution saw an upsurge in a form of nationalism characterized by the exaltation of Mexico's indigenous past. As a result, Cuauhtémoc, the last sovereign Tlahtuani of the Mexica Empire, was elevated to a symbol of national pride and unity. The Declaration of Cuauhtémoc is a text in Nahuatl that has been circulated since the late 1960s within the Mexica movement, where it holds the status of a foundational and prophetic document. This movement claims that it is the final decree given by Cuauhtémoc prior to the fall of Mexico Tenochtitlan on August 13th, 1521. Allegedly, this message was memorized and spread throughout Mesoamerica by a series of runners and has subsequently been passed down via oral tradition to this day. However, it is the position of this show that the text actually dates from the mid 20th century and is best understood as part of the mythologizing of Cuauhtémoc in his role as cultural hero. Nonetheless, analysis of the text, its origins, and the means of its circulation provide important insight into the formation of contemporary folklore in the context of nationalist movements. It can be said that the figure of Cuauhtémoc is the embodiment of indigenous nationalism in Mexico. The son of Ahuitzot, the eighth Tlahtuani of the Mexica Empire, Cuauhtémoc was only 20 years old when he was elected Tlahtuani following the death of Cuitlahuac in 1520. It was Cuauhtémoc who led the final defensive stand of Mexico Tenochtitlan against the combined might of Hernán Cortés' Spanish forces and an indigenous army. It should come as no surprise then that the image of Cuauhtémoc has come to symbolize the resilience and resistance of the Mexican nation. During the Porfiriato, Mexico's intellectuals sought to integrate the indigenous people into the Mexican national identity. Though, as historian Christopher Fulton notes, In most expressions of the time, the Indian was regarded in romantic terms, not as an important actor in his own right, but as the primeval source of the mestizo race, which was understood as the progressive agent in the nation's history. In the hands of Porfirian elites, Mexico's indigenous past was celebrated at the expense of its living indigenous communities. This view of Mexico's indigenous people underscored the formation of cultural nationalism from the Porfiriato through the 1970s. This view is made all the more pronounced when we consider that Porfirio Diaz himself was known to powder his face white in an attempt to conceal his indigenous features. The policy of indigenismo grew under the presidency of Lázaro Cárdenas and the slogan, Mexicanize Indians, don't Indianize Mexico, became the rallying cry of the day. On September 26, 1949, Mexican archaeologist Ulalia Guzman excavated the church at Ixcatiopan, Guerrero. She had been sent to investigate claims that the body of Cuauhtémoc had been buried there in the 16th century by none other than Motolonia himself. Following clues contained in documents belonging to Salvador Juarez, Guzman recovered a collection of bones located under the altar of the church. Guzman determined that the bones were authentic and news quickly spread that the tomb of the young Tlahtuani had indeed been discovered, sparking celebrations across the Mexican countryside. Ultimately, a grand commission was formed by Ina to verify the authenticity of the bones, and they concluded that the entire event was an elaborate hoax perpetrated by Salvador Juarez himself. Guzman was ostracized by the archaeological community for her sloppy fieldwork and most likely went to her grave thinking that she had, in fact, found Cuauhtémoc's bones. A shrine to Cuauhtémoc was established at the church, his alleged bones on prominent display for all to see. 
The town of Ishkat Yopan remains the destination for a yearly pilgrimage where hundreds gather to commemorate and honor Cuauhtémoc to this day. The mythologizing of Cuauhtémoc took a leap forward with the appearance of the alleged Declaration of Cuauhtémoc. The first printed appearance of the Declaration is found in the October 30th, 1967 issue of Iscalot, a periodical published by the organization known as the Movimiento Confederado Restaurador de la Cultura de Anahuac, or the MCRCA. As has been previously discussed on this show, this organization was established in the late 1950s by Rodolfo Nieva Lopez with the intention of reclaiming an indigenous Mexican identity and reestablishing the glory of pre-conquest Mexico. And while I can certainly sympathize with these objectives, the approach taken by the MCRCA to accomplish them has proven to be grounded in fantasy rather than reality. The membership of the MCRCA is well known for producing highly questionable scholarship containing a bizarre mixture of pseudo history, mysticism, and rabid xenophobia. Much like Afrocentrists who promote a highly inaccurate and distorted view of African history, the MCRCA presented an image of Mesoamerica that had very little to do with historical fact. In the MCRCA version of Mexican history, Nahua culture is preeminent above all others and responsible for much of world civilization. According to the MCRCA, the ancient Nahua people traveled to Egypt where they introduced concepts such as pyramid building and aspects of Nahua cosmovision, things which are completely impossible, by the way. <laughs> These beliefs were circulated via their official publication, Iscalot, as well as the book Mexicayot, published in 1969. For those unfamiliar with the Declaration of Cuauhtémoc, we will present the text as it appears in the book Mexicayot, published by the MCRCA, along with translations and an analysis by our colleague, Dr. Magnus Farrell Hansen, in the show notes for this episode. So if you want to read the Declaration and a more in-depth analysis of it by a, you know, PhD in linguistics who also speaks Nahuatl, check out the show notes. <clears throat> 